thank you for tuning in to another video tutorial by easy academy in this particular video i'm going to be covering how to use open source software like spring boot and apache kafka to convert services that were designed originally to be used as uh, to be used in orchestration mode and then migrate those services to choreography so this is a new concept that people are leveraging in today's projects to scale up and to make their services much more resilient. To summarize, we're gonna be covering how to use open source projects like Spring Boot, Apache Kafka, KSQL DB, Kafka Streams, maybe Apache Flink and Apache Beam and all those different open source platforms to convert your services from the old way of doing things using orchestration and then migrate that to a choreography using Kafka and some other open source uh, projects. So thank you very much for tuning in and I hope the content will be beneficial to you. So we're gonna walk you through how some services were uh, designed in the past using orchestration and I'll have an example service that walks you through this and then we're gonna migrate this service to choreography. So this is gonna be a hands-on video tutorial where you will see the example before using uh, orchestration and then migrating this to a choreography where you will see what this means and how it works in real life. Then we're going to cover some of the fundamentals of event-driven design and architecture and then I'll walk you through some of the tools that we're going to be using to do these uh, video tutorials. And then I will show you a, a preview of the second part and if you like that please you know go ahead and subscribe so that you will get the notification as soon as part two is available that's very very important let's talk about orchestration so i'm going to be using this uh, metaphor where you have a conductor now everybody looks up to the conductor and the conductor is the one responsible for driving who is singing and what happens inside the orchestra now in a particular microservice architecture where you have one service that is responsible for driving what happens in the other services this is what you are going to see you typically have a service that re receives a request and then this particular service is responsible for co contacting the other services and then waiting for them to respond in order for it to contact the next service in the sequence this is a, a very big problem because if something were to go wrong in any of these sequences it becomes a very big uh, drama and it is very difficult to uh, troubleshoot the errors that are happening. It is also very difficult to scale this type of services. Now, I'm going to be covering some of the different examples. In this particular service here where we have orchestration, the order service is receiving orders from the calling client. This order service has to contact the payment service, wait for the payment service to respond successfully, and then it's going to go ahead and contact the inventory service, wait for that to respond, and then it's going to go ahead and contact the shipment service and wait for that to respond. As you can see in this sequence, if something were to go wrong in any of these three steps, that is a very big problem because the conductor is the one that is driving all these different um, sequence of events that are supposed to happen. This is not really a good design because it can lead to a lot of problems in the services. Let's take a look at some of those challenges. The first one, like I mentioned earlier, is that it is very error prone. If something were to go wrong in any of these steps, everything crashes and you pretty much have to have some logic, all these different spaghetti a logic uh, inside the application to handle these error conditions and this is not something that you want to do obviously it's going to be very complex and it's going to be less performant because if something will go wrong it's kind of um, very hard to keep up with incoming requests as the traffic builds up especially when you have peak uh, seasons like maybe black friday or several holiday events that your application or software is designed to handle we don't like this and we have to do something about this which is why we introduce you to choreography. So in choreography, just like how you will have one person that is uh, kind of leading the, the the dance and everybody's kind of like following along without the singular person having to tell them what to do. So all the other different services typically just observe what is happening uh, with the leader and they follow along and they behave like adults and they take a look at what needs to happen and they make it happen. Choreography is the new way of designing things now and if you are designing microservices, this is how I want you to be thinking. So before we delve into this, let's take a look at an example. In this particular sequence here, we have the same thing we had before. We have the order service, but instead of the payment service 
being called by the order service the order service typically just drops the event or the message inside some kind of buffering mechanism and then this buffering mechanism is responsible for storing the events tem uh, um, temporarily and then all the other microservices will come pick up the event process it at their own pace put the response and then that will trigger the next one in the sequence to uh, pick it up and process it. So in this particular situation, the order service is not having to call the different services. Every service just comes to the to the buffer, picks up what is responsible, what, what they're responsible for, and then they process it and they put it back. If they have any kind of problem, they will retry again until that is successful. So this allows you to scale independently and you can have different um, instances and different counts and different numbers of each of these individual services. So if you have a particular scenario where the inventory service is having too much, too much work to do, you can independently scale up that inventory service to support the workload. If you have the shipping service, you know, having too many things to do, you can scale that up independently. So you don't have to tie it with all the other different uh, services. This is the new way of doing things. To take a look at the benefits of choreography, you have resilience built in because if something were to go wrong each individual service can actually retry the sequence by itself it is also less complex and it's more performant because you're able to scale up and scale down without having to tie up uh, resources so the efficiency is built in and it performs uh, much better now it's important for us to cover some of the elements of event-driven architecture and design so that you, are, you can understand how choreography actually you know, happens. Typically in event-driven design, you have something that is generating the events. That is the producer. The producer would generate the event and then uh, it will store it inside some kind of buffering mechanism. Now the buffering, buffering mechanism that we're going to be using in this particular video series is going to be Apache Kafka. So whatever is producing the event will store it in Kafka and then we can use something like Kafka streams, KSQL DB, um, Apache Beam, Apache Flink to process these events in either near real time as they're happening or retroactively after the fact. And then we have consumers that once the events are processed, they can pick it up and continue from there. So to summarize, you have things that are generating, components that are generating events called producers. The producers store the event, send the event into the buffering mechanism where something like Apache Kafka will be used to buffer the events. Then we can use something like Kafka Streams, KSQL DB, Apache Flink, Apache Beam, uh, Apache Pulsar to handle these events as they're happening in near real time or after the fact some other time later. Then the consumers will pick up the process uh, products and then uh, take it along from there. That's typically the fundamentals of the event-driven architecture. And as we're moving to choreography, it is very important for you to understand this concept so that when I'm mentioning that something is a producer, you know that this is something that is, this is a component that is putting events or messages in the queue or the buffering mechanism. When I'm talking about a processor, this is the component that is gonna come and pick it up to process it. When I'm talking about the consumer, this is the component that is picking up events from the, from the queue that has been processed uh, to move along in the sequence or in the st stage of events. Now, let's take a look at some of the tools that we can use for implementing event-driven architecture. This is very, very important for you to be aware of what's available in the ecosystem, what's available in the environment, so that as you're designing your systems, you can take a look at what each of these projects are gonna offer, and then you can use this to make decisions about what you need in your projects and what is gonna be working for you in the short term, both in the short term and long term, goals and objectives of your project but before we do that let's take a look at what my channel has to offer i am very very passionate about talking uh, discussing uh, this open source software so if you like what you are hearing so far please go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you would like to support this channel head out to patreon and i have a link there where you can support the channel and then follow me please on easy academy at twitter where i publish uh, content sometimes weekly sometimes multiple times a week and if you like what I'm uh, talking about you can follow along and see if some of the updates that are available I also have a website easyacademy.com where some of my contents are published from time to time now if you're looking to use open source software to process data to store data to aggregate data to analyze data I have a course that focuses just on this the link to the course will be in the description and you can take a look at it so now that we have discussed that let's take a look at some of these tools 
We have Apache Kafka. Apache Kafka is something that I like a lot because it allows you to use the different ecosystem components of Kafka to process uh, events, to store events, to analyze events. And Kafka is one of, one of the most mature um, um, open source projects that, that are available to support event-driven architect event -driven architecture very effectively. And there are also other uh, open source projects that integrate very well into uh, it integrate very well with Apache Kafka, like Spring Boot, like Apache Flink, like Apache Beam. All of them have integrations with Apache Kafka. So it is broadens the ecosystem and allows you to design event-driven architectures very effectively. Apache Flink does not have a storage component, but it does have the processing component that allows you to unify your batch API and your um, stream processing API um, into one particular framework. So if you're doing near real time processing, which is uh, otherwise known as streaming, you can use Apache Flink. If you're doing uh, batch processing, you can also use Apache Flink. Apache Beam 2 is similar to Apache Flink uh, in that Beam allows you to unify the batch processing and the stream processing together in one tool. Kafka primarily fo focuses on stream processing and not really batch processing. So if most of your workloads are for stream processing of handling events as they arrive in near real time, you want to focus with Apache Kafka, where you can use either Kafka Streams, the Java or Scala API, or you can use um, uh, KSQL DB to use SQL-like syntax to handle some of this processing of streams. Then obviously we have Kubernetes, and then Kubernetes has another project by the CNCF called KEDA, Kubernetes Event-Driven Auto-Scaling, where you can monitor some of the buffering mechanism uh, like Apache Kafka and based on the number of events waiting in the queue, you can use uh, this KEDA uh, framework and, and, and project to scale up the number of instances of containers available on Kubernetes to handle some of these events coming up. So like I was talking about in the other component where you have choreography, something like KEDA will allow you to scale up the number of instances of the payment um, system of the shipping system of the inventory system and that will allows you to scale up and scale down independently of each of the other components based on what is waiting for them at the buffering layer like apache kafka now we have some of the um, other tools like spring boot which i like a lot since it integrates very nicely with apache kafka the kafka streams api and the ksql db um, product from Confluent allows you to process these streams in near real time. If you are a Java developer or a Scala developer, I will recommend the Kafka Streams API because you have a lot more control. But if you don't have the time or if you don't have that particular skill set, KSQL DB is very good because it allows you to use SQL like syntax to do what you can do inside uh, Kafka Streams, although it's a little bit uh, limited, but you can do majority. Uh, I would say a lot of what you would do with Kafka Streams, you can do that inside KSQL DB. There's also the Confluent Parallel Consumer that allows you to process and scale up the consuming of the events. Now, typically with Apache Kafka, the number of parallel instances of the consumers you can have uh, is kind of limited or restricted by how many partitions you have. But with the Parallel Consumer, you can do key-based ordering where you don't have to rely on the number of partitions the independent number of keys can allow you to scale pretty much infinitely um, in terms of the number of consumer instances. If you look, if you have some restrictions or some limitations with uh, scaling up based on number of partitions, you can con um, consider using the parallel consumer for this particular um, workload or scenario. And then we have Kafka Connect, which allows you to integrate different uh, data stores into Apache Kafka to generate the events, to produce the events. And then you also have different uh, things that act as consumers to pull out messages or events from Apache Kafka into the different destinations. So the link to some of these will be available in the, uh, in the description. And if you're interested in doing a deep dive on this, my course on massive data processing with open source software covers this a lot. So take a look at that in the description and that would be very helpful. And then we have supporting tools like Docker, Docker Compose, and some other NoSQL data stores that can be used for key value management, graph databases, and document storage. And then uh, the preview of the course is that I'm going to be walking you through uh, setting everything up and um, doing this uh, live interactive uh, demo. So you're going to need Visual Studio Code. You're going to need Git. You're going to need 
uh, Java, the, the latest version of Java. But if you don't have 17, 11 should be fine as well. We're going to be using Apache Maven to compile the code and then run it. And then Postman or the Thunder extension for VS Code will be uh, very, very helpful for us to use this to interact with the REST endpoint and see what's happening as these different services are being migrated from orchestration to choreography. We can also use curl, but I prefer to use Postman or, Thund or the Thunder extension because if you're not really a command line person, the UI will be very be beneficial for you to see what is happening and to, to, to remember how this how this works. Obviously, we need a container environment, so we're going to need Docker for that. And then a Kafka cluster either locally, and then we can also use um, some of the cloud providers for that. And I'll have a link for that in the description. Once again, I thank you very much for staying um, this long into the video. If you like my content and you are looking forward to uh, getting updates and notifications for some of the upcoming content, please go ahead and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Um, check out my GitHub repo. Um, check me out on Patreon and check out my website. And then once again, if you are interested in how to use, in understanding how to use open source software to process data, uh, to store data, to aggregate data, to analyze data, check out my course below and that would allow you to understand how to do some of these things very simply. I thank you for your time today and I will see you in the next videos in the sequence. Thank you very much.